This is a mansion of a wealthy man named James. In his mansion, he had a lot of servants and gardeners. That morning as usual after waking up, James immediately left his bed without a single thing covering his body and stretched his body while enjoying the morning sun. And for every morning, his gardeners had to see such an inappropriate view of his naked body. After stretching his body and put some clothes, James didn't go straight to work. He first practiced martial arts with his personal trainer. But even though he's been practicing martial arts for years, he still couldn't defend himself at all. James' life was perfect. He is smart had a good career, his wealth is abundant, and he also had a fiancé, a beautiful woman named Alyssa. Alyssa is the daughter of a company owner where James worked. With all that, James' life feels like the most perfect life a human can possibly get. Somewhere else, a man named Darnell was seen calling his friends and asking them for a loan for his business capital. But even though he had asked everywhere, he still couldn't get a single person that could help him. Darnell was so perplexed, he even asked his daughter to help borrow money from her school friend. Seeing her husband's behavior, his wife was fed up. She said that instead of borrowing more money and adding up to their debt, he should instead save up. As a wife, she understood the dilemma that her husband had, so she tried to strengthen and support him. After dropping his daughter off at school, Darnell immediately went to his car wash business, which is located in the basement parking lot of the office where James worked. That day, when James arrived at work, everyone was cheering for him because apart from being the person closest to the boss, he was also an outstanding employee. In the afternoon, James was called to the boss's room, the owner of the company and Alyssa's father, Martin. Martin praised James' outstanding job that helped to make a $28 million profit for the company. He then ordered his future son-in-law to start calling him father. James was touched by what he just heard. He cried and hugged Martin tightly. After work, when he was about to leave with his card, Darnell came and surprised him. To see a black guy appeared in front of him, he was so surprised and thought that Darnell was going to mug him. Turned out, he just wanted to give James a car key. So every day, James always washed his car at Darnell's place. James was sorry if he was a bit racist earlier. Darnell, who saw an opportunity, offered James to become an investor in his car wash business. He said that with only $30,000, then in a matter of months, the investment money will definitely make a profit. But unfortunately, James was not interested and then left from there. That night, James and Alyssa held their relationship anniversary party. It was a luxurious party. Alyssa bought an electric guitar as a gift for James. She even invited James' favorite singer to the party. In the middle of the party, a group of FBI agents suddenly appeared and arrested James on charges of embezzlement of money from the company. James was confused because as far as he knew, all this time he had never done anything wrong, but even after trying to explain everything, he was still arrested. The next day, Martin visited James along with a lawyer who would help handle James' case. But strangely, the lawyer did not seem to be on James' side. He didn't want to listen to James' explanation, and instead told him to admit he was wrong greater than the lawyer said, that if he pleaded guilty, that the trial would finish faster, and he would only be jailed for a year. Hearing that, James was irritated. No matter what happened, because he knew that he wasn't guilty, he wouldn't plead guilty during a trial. Since the spread of the news about James' arrest, the company's clients, which felt that they were scanned, demonstrated in front of the court, demanding that James be punished as harshly as possible, even asking for him to be jailed forever. A few days later, the trial was held. During the trial, because James continued to defend himself, in the end, the sentence he received became much more severe. The judge sentenced him to 10 years at the strictest prison in America. Before serving his prison term, the judge gave him 30 days to process the files if he wanted to appeal. So for the next 30 days, James had to be a city prisoner and a tracking alarm would be installed on his feet so he couldn't escape. The next day after being a city prisoner, James, who usually wakes up happy, now could only cry and scream while grieving what had happened to him. He blamed God for being so unfair to him. He felt like the most suffering person in the world. James kept crying for days until he finally got an idea. He decided to run away from America. After packing all the important things, he was determined to take off the tracker alarm on his feet and disguised himself so he wouldn't be recognized. He then went to meet Alyssa at a restaurant. When they met, James asked her to go with him to flee abroad, but Alyssa refused and instead asked to break up saying that she didn't want to live in poverty with him. She said that he could be free and homeless abroad, but she wouldn't come with him. Hearing the sentence just now made him realize that all this time, the only thing that Alyssa loved is his money. Shortly after, the police showed up and arrested James. Knowing it wouldn't be possible to escape from the city, James decided to meet Darnell at the car wash. After telling all of his problems, James, who thought that with Darnell's looks, he might have served in prison before, begged for his help. He apologized for his racist behavior towards him. James was very scared. He was afraid to meet the people in prison, so he asked Darnell to teach him how to survive in prison. Hearing that, Darnell was speechless. He had never been in prison at all, and he was also a bit offended. 
Even though he is black, it doesn't mean that he is a criminal. But seeing an opportunity, Tarnell immediately got an idea. He was willing to help as long as James was willing to pay him $30,000. James, who felt that $30,000 was nothing, immediately agreed. After returning home, Darnell told his wife about the deal with James earlier, but upon hearing that story, his wife was mad. She was disappointed because he decided to scam someone. Moreover, it wouldn't be possible for Darnell to teach James about life in prison because he didn't even know what life is like in prison. Darnell didn't run out of ideas. While his wife was sleeping, he tried to contact his cousin who had been in prison before then asked him to explain all about his experiences while in prison. After getting a lot of information, Darnell was ready to train James. The next day at James' house, Darnell asked if James had ever practiced self-defense. Without answering a word, James confidently changed his clothes and showed Darnell the self-defense moves that he had learned for years from his private tutor. Seeing James's strange movements, Darnell was speechless. He then took the remote and pretended to stab while saying all the years of martial arts training were wasted. James couldn't accept the cold truth Darnell just told him. To make it like a real prison, Darnell made a special room similar to a prison cell in the basement of James' house. Not only that, he changed the entire house and even installed an electric fence in James' yard. After days of preparations, now there are only 21 days left before James was actually jailed. The next afternoon, James called Martin and asked about the investigation of his case. During the call, Martin accidentally heard Darnell's voice and asked about him. James explained that he would help him prepare before going to prison. When the phone was hung up, Martin looked scared. He was afraid that this man named Darnell would interfere with his plans. It turned out that Martin was the mastermind behind this case. He framed James and took the investor's money to pay off his company's debts. The reason Martin framed James was solely because he didn't agree that James was dating his daughter. He then ordered his personal bodyguard to watch over James and Darnell's every move. James kept training for days and even though it was difficult at first after days of training, he started to get used to it. He did physical training with Darnell and even went to some people to test his fighting skill. But despite his hard work, he didn't seem to get the hang of it. He even tried to escape from his made-up prison, but he didn't manage to. That's what happens when you try to jump a fence illegally. Ten days remaining before his appeal trial. During the day when Darnell went to the basement to check on James, he was surprised to see James sharpening his self-made knife. Darnell was proud because he had managed to change James the nerd guy into a very scary guy. At night, Darnell made the final test for James. He explained that if he could pass this test, he was 100% sure that James will be able to survive in prison. The test was James has to get out of the prison cell during a riot. Later, Darnell, along with the servants and gardeners, would make a simulation of a prison riot, and if James can get out safely, then he will be declared ready. After all ready preparations, the final test finally began. James failed miserably. When things started to calm down, Darnell was shocked to see a knife stuck in James' forehead. In a panic, Darnell rushed to his house so that his wife could treat James' injury. After being treated, Darnell's wife invited James to have dinner together. During dinner, Darnell's wife and daughter were shocked to see James eat as if he was possessed. When he finally left, Darnell's wife was pessimistic. He judged that James could not possibly survive in prison, let alone survive the hardships in prison. With his strange behavior, he wouldn't even make it in their daughter's school. Hearing that, Darnell also became pessimistic. James didn't have much time left. The next day, Darnell invited James to meet his cousin named Russell who had been in prison. When they got there, he saw that there were lots of thugs, members of Russell's gang. Inside the house, Darnell begged Russell to contact his friends in prison to protect James while he'll be in jail later, but sadly, he couldn't. He explained that all of his friends in jail are black and they wouldn't want to protect James who is white. Russell then suggested James went to the white people's gang and asked for their help. That night, as Russell told them, James and Darnell went to the white gang base. James went inside alone while Darnell was waiting outside, but as soon as Darnell entered the base to ask for their help, the gang members thought that he was a police undercover and tortured him. Thankfully, Darnell realized that James needed his help. He made a ruckus and buy some time for them to escape from there. Yeah! Black man just came here with a flamethrower! The devil in here, bitch! And he's a black man! Luckily, James and Darnell managed to escape. Both of them then stopped by the cafe to take a rest. There, Darnell asked if James had really embezzled money from the company. While denying that, James tried to convince Darnell that he was innocent. 
When he returned home, James kept trying to explain the details of the case, and from that explanation, De Arnell concluded that the only suspicious person was Martin. He was sure that Martin was the mastermind behind all this, but James still couldn't believe how he could be framed by his future father-in-law. Darnell then asked James to look for the evidence, namely evidence of company transaction data that was stored on Martin's secret computer in the office warehouse. When they arrived, they disguised themselves as the janitor to avoid suspicion. After successfully infiltrating the warehouse, the two of them immediately took the computer, but when they were about to leave, Martin's bodyguard suddenly appeared and threatened them with a gun. James tried to fight the bodyguard and managed to drop the gun from his hand, but when Darnell took the gun, his hand was shaking because he never held a gun before. Seeing that, the bodyguard took back the gun and left from there with the secret computer. James was annoyed because he realized that all this time Darnell had been lying and using him. He then left Darnell alone. The next day, James decided to join Russell's gang, hoping that if he committed a serious crime even just for once, then the inmates would definitely respect and be afraid of him. Two days later, James and Russell's gang planned to rob a bank. Before taking action, just in case, Russell gave a gun to James and took a photo with the other gang members. After that, Darnell suddenly came to apologize and at the same time asked James not to give up. They both would be able to find evidence of Martin's deception and fight back if they worked together. Hearing that, James hesitated. He was still annoyed, but deep down, James was happy that Darnell caught up with him even though he had been lied to, but after spending more than 20 days with him, he felt that he is the only person who sincerely helped him. James finally decided not to rob a bank and went along with Darnell. There were only 20 hours left before James was picked up by the police. On the road, Darnell said that when he was about to wash Martin's car, he saw that his car tires were full of beach sand, and when he asked his employees, they all told him that it had been a week since Martin's car tires were always full of beach sand. He was sure that Martin had hidden all the evidence on his private boat. They then decided to find out. When they arrived at the port, Darnell's suspicion was right. They saw the bodyguard from yesterday taking Martin's secret computer into Martin's private boat. The two of them then sneaked in. After they got into the boat, James hastily took the computer, but from behind, Martin's men came to arrest James and Daniel. The bodyguard told James that it was better to surrender. James couldn't possibly win against them because he was weak. Hearing that sentence, James, as if he was possessed by a fighter, suddenly fought like a real fighter and beat all of them. They both won the fight. Time. But when they were about to leave, Martin and Alyssa came only to find all of their men lost. They then tried to seduce James, but he was not provoked. He then asked Darnell to leave immediately with the lifeboat, knowing he was cornered. Martin told his bodyguard to threaten them with a gun. Luckily, James remembered that this afternoon, Russell gave him a gun, and he immediately pointed them back. In the middle of the tension, James explained that now, he was stalling for time before the police came. Hearing what James just said, Martin was confused. It was impossible for the police to come to the middle of the sea, but not long after that, the police really came. James then revealed that the tracker device that the police put in him was triggered because they had just passed the city border. After the police checked the evidence and looked at the data in the computer, Martin and his men were arrested while James was released. James was grateful because he brought the gun that Russell gave him before, but one of the police saw the gun in his hand and he ended up being arrested for illegal weapon possession, which was considered a danger to society. James was jailed for six months, but fortunately, Thanks to the previous incident, James managed to survive life in prison. Even when another inmate tried to bully him, he wasn't afraid to fight back. Not only that, after dozens of days spent with Darnell, both James and Darnell had become good friends. James has also invested in Darnell's car wash. He was sure that his best friend could make his business successful. Sure enough, month after month went by and according to the expectations, Darnell's business looks to be growing rapidly. His car wash business had moved to a bigger place and used an automatic machine. Finally, the day of James's freedom came. Outside the prison, Darnell had been waiting for his best friend to show up. He happily hugged James and then took his best friend home.